Welcome aboard, shipmates. We, um, we just, reached a milestone yesterday. I was uh, checking my email and I was sent a message that my product has finally reached market. Of course, I've got five other products that should be reaching the market momentarily, but the one product was the one I had been working on for several months and finally is on sale in Amazon. Glory be to God and I thank the Lord for that. Interestingly enough, it was also yesterday that I received another message from my job. Apparently they uh, grapes were seasonal, and so they're asking for us to come back with the stipulation of the four days and four days, four days on, four days off. Of course, I left them a message stating that, no, I will do four days off, but three days on, and for obvious reasons, one of which is the Sabbath and so forth. If they call me back, I will go back because I'm not quite there to where I can depend on the passive income. So if they would take me, fine. If they don't, also fine. Now, I'm not saying that uh, to be facetious in any kind of way, but the reality is, is that um, I'm beginning to see, as it were, light at the end of this tunnel. My products are reaching the market. Not only that, but I have competent people that are working with me that can take me to that next level. Of course, the, uh, the turtle doesn't get on the fence by himself. He has to have help to, to get there. And I'm getting that help that I need. Again, oh, glory be to God who gives me the help. And his providence by which all things consist and exist. Okay. Just so you know, of all of the plans that I have in motion and all of the things that I have talked about in previous videos, this is the summit of it all. I have a young lady in the Philippines that I must bring with me so that I can share with her the essence of who I am and what I have come to be. Namely, when she accepted me, I was the least of whoever. I was homeless, smelly, due in large part to my, my wanderings and travelings through life. The fact of the matter is, is that um, My journey started when I was almost finishing my college degree. I was studying theology in, at Oakwood College and um, I had my family with me and we used to shop at the Oakwood College grocery store. And God had always been there to see me through on every particular in my life. And I was pleased to have God 
see me through. However, on this one particular day, when we were in the grocery store, meaning my wife and I at the time, and we were shopping like we normally did, picking up this and picking up that. And we knew we had a certain amount of money, and um, so we were th very frugal with what we were getting based on the amount of money we knew we had. And my wife and I at the time, we, you know, we negotiated money like champions, like big bosses. But on this particular day, uh, when we had gotten everything that we thought we could get with our eye on the money that we had, we approached the storekeeper and um, we were standing in line. We had people in front of us and people behind us. And when the person in front had finished gathering their groceries, the teller started to tally up what we had. And when she asked me for the money, I was one penny short. One penny. The guy behind me said, don't worry, I'll take care of the penny. I got out of the store and instead of praising God, for the penny. I was upset about the penny. And here is the reason why I was upset. My wife comes from a very to-do family. Now, I wouldn't say they're rich in terms of money, but they're rich in terms of flair. They're rich in terms of family. They're rich in terms of that structure and that culture, Bermuda culture of family. And as far as I was concerned, I wasn't really making that much of an impact in terms of who I was as a provider husband for their daughter. And me being one penny out upset me because I didn't want I didn't want to just be able to just have just enough all of the time. Never realizing the offense to God in that He was the one that was taking care of us all along. But I had internalized it in that brief moment. And as a result of internalizing it in that brief moment, I made a choice at that point in my life that enough was enough. I was going to go home and start a business to prove to my mother-in-law especially that I was up to the challenge of being a husband to her daughter. That was my mindset. After I had cemented the thought in my mind that that's what I was going to do. Right there at Oakwood College campus, I was called into the theology, the head of the theology department at Oakwood College. And Dr. Mervyn Warren, those of you who know Oakwood College, you know that. Dr. Warren, Dr. Mervyn Warren is no joke. He called me in his office and he asked me to be a chaplain in Florida. Now you have to understand, if Dr. Warren is calling you, me, a student, a theology student, and telling me he wants me to go to Florida, to become a chaplain there. It is a done deal. It's not a if or it's not a let's work it out. No. When he made that statement, he made it emphatically and he was expecting me to follow through and go do what he said do. But because 
I had made up in my mind that I was going home to start a business so I could prove to my mother-in-law, this is what I want to show you that I'm able to do to take care of your daughter. Because that thought was cemented in my mind, I looked Dr. Mervyn Warren in his face and said, no, thank you. I want to go home and start a business. Little did I realize at that moment in time what I have done and what I was doing. I can't even imagine what Dr. Mervyn Warren was thinking because here I am, a theology student, turning down a call by him so I can go do business? Really? Again, looking back on it now, I tremble at the thought that I even did that. Okay. I not only did that, but I did go to Bermuda. And I did start a business. And in less than three months, I had made over $300,000 in just three months of, that I opened my business doors. Oh, yes, I can tell you the multiple things that I was blessed to be able to do this and God blessed me to be able to do that. Little did I realize what I was doing. Yeah. Needless to say, the business was stolen from me. Taken from me, however you want to put it. And I ended up having to leave Bermuda on the backs and heels of the fact that I became in debt beyond that which I can pay and blah, blah, and blah, blah. And my life rippled through struggle after struggle after struggle. I became homeless after a period of time and lost my family as a result of the struggles of this and that and the other issues that may or may not even have been relevant, but the totality of it all was that I lost everything. I'm telling you this now because I need it to be clear that the struggle has been a real one. And now because I'm able to put a caption <laughs> on what I have been through. Here I am now in 20 22. I'm 62 years old now. My youthfulness is well spent. <laughs> I have had a plethora of years whereby I can honestly say that God has taken care of me in every way. I have learned <laughs> to trust him with the penny. Yeah, yeah, I made a choice to do business. What is the difference now? Now, I'm very much aware of my talents. I'm very much aware of my time left on the earth. As it relates to what God is doing and why. I have goals. <laughs> that I have laid at the feet of Jesus. And I seek to go from here. Not just wanting and seeking the battle for me and mine. But with my ear <laughs> to the will of him who have called me out of darkness into this marvelous light. Yeah, my name is Nate Jones and I am a Bushman. Yeah, I have made a seasonal mistake in my early years. 
as it relates to <laughs> being a chaplain or being a businessman. I fell out of graces with my mother in law for various reasons. Maybe my name is Mud in the circle of that family, and that's understandable, and I don't have a problem with that. My trade for them versus the chaplaincy in Florida, where my talents might have been more suited and well adopted for such a task. If there is such a thing of regret, I don't know about it. But what I can say is, is that I lay all at the feet of Jesus and I consider in him there is no failure as long as I am him. So, I've got books on the market. I am a poet writer. I seek to challenge myself and channel my talents in such a way that to God be the glory. I don't know to what usefulness I can be used. But I do know that from here, I seek to please him in every way possible. The first thing I need to do is establish my present condition and lifestyle, cement it, move to the next which is about 9000 a month. Cement that and move to my final resting place, as it were, in terms of retirement. 90000 a month. It's not rich, but it's comfortable in the sense that it gives me the ability to be of an assistance to those who need me. Namely, the widows and orphans. I want to thank you for giving me the platform. I have seven subscribers. And it was enough to get me from point A to where I am now. Welcome.